It's time out for you and me to stop running away from the wolf, right into the arms of the fox, looking for some kind of help. That's a drug. Number two, self-defense. When young black people were on the cover of Newsweek magazine, and they were in the New York Times holding rifles, students at Cornell University, Black Panthers in Oakland, California, Black Muslims in New York, America was generally for gun control. <laughs> the same people who were for gun control then because it appeared that black people were serious about taking up arms are now against gun control for other reasons. And so when Malcolm talked about self-defense, it was during a time when there was very little gun control. Since self-preservation is the first law of nature, we assert the Afro-American's right to self-defense. The Constitution of the United States of America clearly affirms the right of every American citizen to bear arms. <laughs> See, here you have, here you have a black radical quoting the, the same Constitution and asserting the same right as the National Rifle Association. See how things shift? So today, NRA is considered right wing. Back in the day, Malcolm was considered left wing, and Malcolm stood on the same Second Amendment that conservatives do today. See, if you live long enough, you see all of these shifts, and that's why you have to be focused on your objectives and your vision and your strategy, because if, if, if things go around and come around. And as Americans, we will not give up a single right guaranteed under the Constitution. The history, the history of unpunished violence against our people clearly indicates that we must be prepared to defend ourselves or we will continue to be a defenseless people at the mercy of a ruthless and violent racist mob. Do you really know the difference between self-defense and violence? And for those who say Malcolm advocated violence, what Malcolm advocated was self-defense, that if someone comes at you or comes for you in a violent way, he believed that you have the right and the responsibility to, to, to respond in kind. Malcolm did not believe the larger society could be um, trusted to protect the interests and the persona of black people. And so Malcolm said, if the country will not defend you, then you have the right to defend yourself by any means necessary. Now that's different than going downtown and burning down stores. This random violence had no strategic value in anybody's mind, and certainly Malcolm X, because he didn't assume that if someone was violent towards you, that would provoke the conscience of America. I'm not sure Malcolm ever believed that America had a conscience. Malcolm's disbelief in American morality was such that he said, we're going to the United Nations. We're going to report America to the community of nations and let the world be the judge of this country. And that really offended a lot of people because up until that suggestion, America had been a self-correcting society. The thought that we needed other countries from around the world to sit us down and reprimand us and correct us, that was, that was deeply offensive to a country that 100 years prior had lost thousands of lives in a civil war, which a lot of people thought was over slavery. And so the idea that we would go to United Nations and, and, and tell on America, that was deeply offensive, but that was Malcolm's strategy.